In this video, you'll learn about the PN junction. Shown here is a simple sketch of the PN junction. This is the basic physical structure of a diode. It's formed by starting with a piece of silicon and doping one region of it p-type, introducing acceptor dopants, and a neighboring region n-type by introducing donor dopants. As a result, this p-type region has a much higher concentration of holes, and this n-type region has a much higher concentration of electrons. Having put these two regions right next to each other, we might expect holes to diffuse naturally from areas of high concentration on the left to areas of much lower concentration on the right. And at the same time, we might expect electrons, which exist in much higher concentration on the right, to diffuse over to the left. And that's exactly what happens. Both the electron and the hole diffusion give rise to a net positive diffusion current from left to right across the PN junction. Let's consider first the movement of free electrons from right to left from the n-type region to the p-type region. Now remembering that those free electrons arose because pentavalent dopants were introduced, when those electrons leave, they leave behind an excess of positive charge in the crystal lattice at the location of the dopant atoms. These are bound charges, they're not free to move. When the electrons move over to the p-type region, they quickly recombine with the high concentration of holes there. At the same time, holes are diffusing from left to right across the p-n junction, and they're leaving behind bound fixed negative charges at the location of the trivalent dopants that were introduced to create the p-type region in the first place. So as this diffusion proceeds, we end up with a region surrounding the p-n junction itself that has no or very low concentration of charge carriers in it, free charge carriers. This region is said to be depleted of free charge carriers and is therefore referred to as a depletion region. However, since we've got a bunch of fixed positive charge here on the right and fixed negative charge here on the left side of the PN junction, naturally we expect to see an electric field from right to left across the depletion region. Now that electric field gives rise to a drift current. That is any free charge carriers, be they electrons or holes, that happen to stumble upon the depletion region are subject to this electric field and are immediately swept across it, giving rise to a drift current, IS, here, flowing in the opposite direction of the diffusion current. So charge carriers diffuse across the PN junction, setting up a depletion region, and then a countering electric field gives rise to a drift current until the whole process reaches steady state when the diffusion current is precisely cancelled by the countering drift current. The static electric field across the depletion region gives rise to a potential difference that can be measured across the depletion region as shown here in this plot where potential is plotted versus position x across the pn junction. The total potential difference across the PN junction that arises in equilibrium is called the barrier voltage and can be calculated from this expression shown here. It's proportional to the thermal voltage and it depends on the dopant concentrations in the P and N type regions. Higher dopant concentrations create a larger barrier voltage because there's a stronger diffusion across the PN junction giving rise to uh, a larger depletion region and requiring a larger barrier voltage to oppose it. You'll notice that the depletion region having a very low concentration of charge carriers is an insulator, whereas the doped semiconductor regions P and N on the left and right of the junction have high carrier concentrations and therefore are pretty good conductors. So in steady state, the PN junction looks kind of like a capacitor. 
So far, our cartoon drawings of the PN junction have looked pretty symmetric, but in reality, usually they're quite asymmetric. Specifically, one side is usually much more heavily doped than the other side. In fact, the difference in carrier concentrations can be several orders of magnitude, so much more than is being illustrated here even. When that's the case, only a very thin depletion region appears in the more heavily doped side. A much wider depletion region appears in the more lightly doped side, because ultimately there's got to be a charge balance in steady state with electrons that moved from right to left, recombining with holes on the left side of the PN junction and vice versa. Such junctions are therefore often called one-sided junctions because the vast majority of the depletion region appears on one side of the actual junction. If we plot carrier concentrations versus position X through the PN junction, we see a plot something like this. On the left side, we have a P-type region. So the whole concentration in the P-type region is very high, while the electron concentration is much lower. Remember that we call holes in a P-type region the majority carrier. And therefore, P sub P is the majority carrier concentration in the P-type region whereas the concentration of electrons in the p-type region is the minority carrier concentration and is determined by this expression which we've seen before proceeding through the depletion region we see very little carrier concentration of either type there and then when we get into the n-type region on the right, we've got electron concentration that's much higher than whole concentration, electrons being the majority carrier in the n-type region. However, this being a one-sided junction, we see that the majority carrier concentration is lower on the right than on the left in this case. And that's because the dopant concentration in the p-type region was much higher than in the n-type region. The charge density, as we mentioned before, is much higher in the more heavily doped part of the PN junction, in this case, the P-type side, than it is on the N-type side. But ultimately, we've got to achieve charge balance. So the area under these two parts of the plot are equal, the blue shaded and the gray shaded areas. So as a result, the depletion region extends much further into the n-type region and that dimension is labeled x sub n. It's much greater than the extent to which the depletion region extends into the p-type region xp. So in this one-sided p-n junction xn is quite a bit greater than xp. Here on the bottom, we show a plot of the potential across this one-sided PN junction, building up from zero at the start of the depletion region in the P-type material, all the way up to the barrier voltage, VO, at the rightmost uh, extent of the depletion region. Just a reminder, the electric field is actually proportional to the gradient of this plot. so we expect the highest electric field to arise right at the interface between the P and the N-type materials, where we've got the most positive and negative charge on either side of us. So that's the PN junction with no external connections made to it in steady state. But what really gets interesting is the behavior of the PN junction when we apply a voltage or make connections to the two terminals. We'll talk about that next.